We believe in Jesus, no matter what people say to us. We believe that He's our Lord by His resurrection. We believe that heaven may start from this land if we're open heart to His resurrection and merciful love. If you believe Jesus is the way to seek, leave behind a life of sin. Come on forward, come follow him. Put your hands up. If you believe Jesus is the way to seek, leave behind a life of sin. Come on forward, come follow him. We believe in Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and endless life. Every day we say to him, here I am, you count on me. We believe that heaven may start from this land if we're open hearts to his resurrection and merciful love. Hey, blessed and pleasant morning, brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to another edition of Morning Prayer, brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Philippines. Today is Tuesday, the seventh day of May in 2024, and here in Dangriga, the skies are a little bit grayer than I thought it would be, and the orange sun is not as bright as normally it is by this time, but I know it's coming up there on the horizon, not too far from no, I hope you're having a beautiful morning where you are this morning and that you had a pleasant evening's rest. Mm -hmm. We're going to kick things off with one this morning that has quickly become one of my um, favorite hymns. Yeah, this one entitled When Morning Gills the Sky. Let's have a listen. <laughs>
lovely one there done by the choir and congregation of St. Mary's Anglican Church in Barbados with Mr. Akani Drakes as the organist. We're going to continue then getting our words here up on screen for May the 7th in 2024. And let's see if I could make that happen here in 3, 2, and 1. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory to our Lord Jesus Christ. Words from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. Using verse 1 on page 35, if you are following along in your books of common prayer. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Our prayer of intent. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended. Amen. Our first canticle for this morning is the canticle, Christ our Passover. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. So let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. At this time we pause to call to mind those things that in thought word or deed you may have committed, things that might have been displeasing to Almighty God, things that might have been unjust to our neighbors, or perhaps things that might have been unkind even to our very selves. For these times and at these moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Together we pray. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in our goodness, and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. At this time, we have the reading of our psalm, and our psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm number 78, part 1. And leading us in the reading of the psalm this morning is Mrs. Carol Moore. Let's have this one. The psalm appointed today is Psalm 78, part 1. Hear my teaching, O my people. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will declare the mysteries of ancient times, that which we have heard and known, and what our forefathers have told us. We will not hide from their children. We will recount the generations to come, the praiseworthy deeds and the power of the Lord, and the wonderful works he has done. He gave his decrees to Jacob and established a law for Israel which he commanded them to teach their children, that the generations to come might know and the children yet unborn, that, in their, that they in their turn might tell it to their children, so that they might put their trust in God, and not forget the deeds of God, but keep his commandments, and not be like their forefathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation whose heart was not steadfast, and whose spirit was not faithful to God. The people of Ephraim, armed with the bow, turned back in the day of battle. They did not keep the covenant of God and refused to walk in his law. They forgot what he had done and the wonders he had shown them. 
he worked marvels in the sight of their forefathers, in the land of Egypt, in the field of Zoan. He split open the sea and let them pass through. He made the waters stand up like walls. He led them with a cloud by day, and all the night through with a glow of fire. He split the hard rocks in the wilderness, and gave them drink as from the great deep. He brought streams out of the cliff, and the waters gushed out like rivers. But they went on sinning against him, rebelling in the desert against the Most High. They tested God in their hearts, demanding food for their craving. They railed against God and said, Can God set a table in the wilderness? True, he struck the rock, the waters gushed out, and the gullies overflowed. But is he able to give bread or to provide meat for his people? When the Lord heard this, he was full of wrath. A fire was kindled against Jacob, and his anger mounted against Israel, for they had no faith in God, nor did they put their trust in his saving power. So he commanded the clouds above, and opened the doors of heaven. He rained down manna upon them to eat and gave them grain from heaven. So mortals ate the bread of angels. He provided for them food enough. He caused the east wind to blow in the heavens, and led out the south wind by his might. He rained down flesh upon them like dust, and winged birds like the sand of the sea. He let it fall in the midst of their camp, and wronged about their dwellings. So they ate and were well filled, for he gave them what they craved, but they did not stop their craving, though the food was still in their mouths, so God's anger mounted against them. He slew their strongest men and laid low the youth of Israel. In spite of all this, they went on sinning and had no faith in his wonderful works, so he brought their days to an end like a breath and their years in sudden terror. Whenever he slew them, they would seek him, and repent and diligently search for God. They would remember that God was their rock, and the Most High God their Redeemer. But they flattered him with their mouths, and lied to him with their tongues. Their heart was not steadfast toward him, and they were not faithful to his covenant. But he was so merciful that he forgave their sins and did not destroy them. Many times he held back his anger and did not permit his wrath to be roused. For he remembered that they were but flesh, a breath that goes forth and does not return. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We want to thank Ms. Carol for leading us in the reading of Psalm 78. And Ms. Carol is reading in honor of the birthday of Miss Melissa. Happy birthday, Miss Melissa. We continue then with our second canticle for this morning. This one, the song of the three young men. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you entirely, exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you, seated between the cherubim. We will praise you entirely, exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the vets. In the high vaults of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you entirely, exalt you forever. Our Bible reading for this morning comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, Matthew chapter 13, verse 18 through to 23. And leading us in the reading this morning is Miss Arlette Hennis. Let's have a listen. Good morning. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 13, verse 18 to 23. Here when the parable of the sower. 
When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. So as for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and another thirty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And in the middle of coming to him, what they did was they had questioned whether or, or why really and truly he had not um, fully explained the parable. The soils were understood from what we studied yesterday. And we also understood <clears throat> that the sower was set and the seed was set. It was the soil that was in question. So hearing the disciples say, well, why didn't you just tell us plainly? Yes. Jesus explained to them yesterday that hearing you will hear and still not understand, seeing you will see and still not perceive. And it was all because Jesus was saying that, you know what? Some of the hearts are hardened, so they can't understand the message. All right. And hmm, Jesus told them yesterday as they were concluding that he speaks to them in parables because it's not illustrations to make difficult things clear to all but it is those who can see the presence of God's message who are spiritually sensitive that will be able to understand because they would not be hardened in their heart towards the story that they're heaping that they're hearing and so they would not be heating, heaping up contempt upon God's word and it's interesting because right after he says this, Jesus explains what the parable means, what each soil represents, yeah, and how it is the response to the word of God, right, or the word of the kingdom of God. And he explains that each soil represents one of four responses. The wayside represents those who would never really hear the word with understanding. So they hear the word, they can make out what is being said, but they're not understanding. And the thing about it is the word of God must be understood before it can truly bear fruit. Now, one of Satan's chief works 
is keeping men in darkness regarding their understanding of the gospel. Hmm? To create confusion, the father and author of all lies creates confusion even when we are trying to understand the word of God. Hmm? He's always on the watch to hinder the word, even from the beginning of Genesis. <clears throat> yeah, beginning of creation in Genesis. Yes, when the woman says, well, God says, don't do this. He says, did God really say that? Huh? It's not that this is going to happen to you. God knows that it's because this is going to happen to you. Instead. And he, he's tricky and he's sneaky. So he twists the word of God. And that's the thing. The wayside soil represents those who will hear the word but not understand it and whose understanding of what they hear is easily twisted and manipulated. So birds eat it. The word comes, but it doesn't find any root at all. It's just there on the surface and birds eat it up. The stony places now, hmm? the stony places, the rocky ground, these are the ones who hear the word, immediately receive it with joy, but this person has no root, and when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person falls away. Remember we said yesterday, the seed falls on thin soils on the top of stony places, quickly spring up, but then withers and dies. And that is how it is with many. And for me, I believe far too many respond to hearing the word of God in this way. They hear it, they respond to it immediately with enthusiasm, but then things fade away. Whether things fade away because they feel they are not getting the kind of encouragement or continued teaching, whether things fade away because even though they're getting teachings but the hardships of life and, oh, my schedule is too busy, oh, I don't have the time, or oh, um, my family is busy with this, whatever the case may be. Hmm? And it's interesting because it's like a suddenness of supposed conversion. But then it is not the conversion that's the problem or the suddenness of it. The problem is not their sudden growth, but their lack of them. And I think about like revival services. When you have revival services or mission services, people come out and there is clapping, there is praying, there is singing and everything seems well and people walk away. Some get baptized. Yes, they commit their life to Christ or recommit their lives to Christ and it's good while the revival lasts. But at the end of the revival, when the work of staying consistent and committed is then put to the test, then they walk away. They walk away. It's like being in a church service and the word being preached hits you and you feel convicted so you want to do, but then you leave the church service, you enter back into regular life and what happens? Regular life takes over and it is gone. And sometimes it's not that the person does not want, sometimes they fall away I mean, they get tripped up by something or persecution or deliberate inflicted activities that negatively impact them, comes their direction, and they give up. They give up. I always tell people it is in the hardships of life that you need to hold on to the word of God the tightest enough you know, because it is only the word of God that can bring you through these hardships in life. But for many, when the hardships of life comes, that's when they give up on the word. Because they feel that if they had the word, these hardships wouldn't come at all. But that's not how it works. That's not how it works any at all. So no depth of soil. They receive it quickly with enthusiasm. And then it is gone. Then the thorns. Hmm? These are the ones who hear the word, but the cares of the world, lures of wealth, choke out the word. And so it yields nothing. The stock of grain grows up, looks strong, but they get to a point where something distracts or takes away from it and it chokes up. So you respond to the word and you go for a while, but are choked up and, and stopped in their spiritual growth by competition from 
Let's call it unspiritual things. The soil is good soil. The seed is good seed. The, 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 the word is good, the, the, the seed is good seed and the sower is good sower. But the soil, the soil is the thing. And with the thorns, the soil represents fertile ground for the word, you know. It represents fertile ground because without fertile ground, the grains would not grow. But like we said, maybe the soil is too fertile because it also grow all sorts of things that will choke out the word. And that is the most dangerous one in my mind, you know. The most dangerous one in my mind is he who believes the word and is producing fruit and things look good for them, but things look so good for them and they feel so blessed that they take the blessing for granted one or the blessings are so much that they use the blessing for other purposes outside of kingdom living and they get distracted by the outside of kingdom living. So God is blessing you in your business with prosperity and you have customers and you are making a decent income. You are tithing your money and you still have enough to take care of your family, to tithe to your church and then a little excess on the side. And the little excess on the side then causes you to think, well, instead of one vehicle, I could have two vehicles, one for work during the week and one for Sundays. Yeah? Instead of wearing the clothes I've always been wearing, now because I have extra money because I am blessed by God, I could buy more expensive shoes, more expensive clothes, more expensive jewelry. And the next thing you know, your appearance become more important than the way your heart appears before God. Because material things, because of how you are being blessed, then becomes the issue. And for me, that is the dangerous part. Because you are being blessed, you recognize that you are being blessed, but you're too fertile. <laughs> you're too fertile in that while the word of God is growing, all sorts of things that are not of God also have the space to grow and they choke out the good. That's, that's, that for me is sad. Because the word is maturing in you and it's bearing fruit but instead of focusing on the fruit that is being born for the kingdom all that comes along with it because the soil is so fertile then becomes the main focus and it reminds me of store up not treasures for yourself where moth and rust can destroy hmm? because where your treasure lies there your heart will be also And that one, that one really, really worries me. And then, of course, the fourth and final soil is the good soil. As seeds falling on good ground brings a good crop of grain, so some respond rightly to the word and bear fruit. Good soil represents those who receive the word, bears fruit in their soil in differing proportions and that is also key to notice because notice the seeds that fall on good soil don't all bear the same amount hmm? look at verse 23 but as for what is sown on good soil this is the one who hears the word and understand it who indeed bears fruit and yield one in case a hundredfold and a nine sixty and another in thirty if all three are good soils why are all not producing the same way? That's the thing. There are differing proportions, even though each has a generous harvest and each is considered good soil. It means that even for the good soil, what we produce is dependent upon the mercy of God that allows us to bear what we are supposed to. You and I are good soil, but you might be doing far greater things for the glory of the kingdom than I am. And it's important to know that while there are varieties of soil and varieties of responses, responses, even though that are considered the same type of soil, will have a difference in responses as well in terms of their yield. Do not compare your relationship with God and what you are doing for the glory of the kingdom of God to anybody else. Do what you must do in order to accomplish what God has given you 
to accomplish. Don't be comparing yourself to nobody. You might not be the most eloquent writer or speaker, but you might have a heart for God to do for people to, to the extent where others can't even fathom that they would go. Your musical talent that you will use for the glory of God's kingdom might be so beautiful that nobody can compare to how wonderful you could sing or to how wonderful you could um, make other people feel through the ministry of singing. Hmm? That is... <sighs> that is the beauty of the gift of God. Yeah? That is the beauty of the gift of God. Each according to his own measure as the grace from God. And the question remains, just like yesterday, what type of soil are you? Are you bearing fruit and what you are doing to make sure that you become good soil? How are you fertilizing yourself to make sure you are good soil? It is necessary that we do. Hmm? It is necessary that we fertilize our soils to put us where we're supposed to be for the growth that is necessary in the kingdom of God. Right? So, that's our challenge. Do you know what type of soil you are? Do you know what type of soil you are willing to become? And are you willing to do what is necessary to get you there for the glory of God? The answer to that is entirely up to you. Amen. Let us continue then with the profession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we profess our faith, saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, and he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church. Communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. For our suffrages this morning, we use suffrage E. Lord, reveal your love among us, that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations, and teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness, and your servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us your will may be done. Our first collet for today is the collet for the sixth Sunday of Easter. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceeds all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Together we say, I call it for the unemployed. Heavenly Father, we remember before you those who suffer want and anxiety from lack of work. Guide the people of this land so to use our public and private wealth. Sorry. That all may find suitable and fulfilling employment and receive just payment for their labors. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Today in our world cycle of prayer, we pray for the people of Eswatini. And in our ecumenical cycle of prayer, we pray for our sisters and brothers who are members of the United Church in the Solomon Islands. And now we turn to our own personal prayers of intercessions and thanksgiving. This morning, we'd like to extend birthday greetings to the following individuals. Celebrating a birthday today is Mrs. Melissa McDougall, Miss Charlotte Castillo, Miss Erin Regal, and Mrs. Faye Marie Anderson. We pray, ladies, that you'll have a blessed and beautiful birthday and that God's blessings will continue to be upon you, not just for today, but for all the remaining days of your life. Happy birthday! In our prayers this morning, we give Almighty God thanks for persons who have recovered from illness and surgery, and we continue to pray for healing and recovery for the following individuals. We remember and pray for Miss Judith, Miss Eileen, Miss Pauline, Miss Rose, Miss Grace, Miss Celine, Miss Maria, Miss Norma. Miss Mary, Miss Kim, and Miss Jean. We pray for Miss Toya, Miss Marley, Miss Janet, Miss Barry, Miss Soila, Miss Lisa, Miss Justine, Miss Aisley, Miss Des, Miss Sylvia, and Miss Monica. We remember and pray for Miss Margaret, Miss Marina, Miss Janice, Miss Dylan, Miss Alma, Miss Marlene, Miss Crystal, Miss Amelia, Miss Amy, Miss Molly, and Miss Melita. Remember and pray for Miss Marie, Miss Venancia, Miss Teresa, Miss Althea, Miss Janice, Miss Jessica, Miss Ruby, Miss Gloria, Miss Martha, and Miss Betty. We pray for Miss Agnes, Miss Lena, Miss Loretta, Miss Barbara, Miss Celestina, Miss Ben Marie, Miss Yolanda, Miss LaShawn, Miss Glenda, Miss Salome, Miss Felicia, Miss Petrona, Miss Sonia, Miss Myrtle, Miss Geraldine, Miss Arlette, Miss Lorraine, Miss Elma, Miss Maud, Miss Alma, Miss Joycelyn, and Miss Priscilla. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for Miss Beryllyn, Miss Carol, Miss Jasmine, Miss Alair, Miss Nina, Miss Leonor, Miss Tanya, Miss Robin, Miss Jane, Miss Camille, Miss Daisha, Miss Marie W., Miss Kieran, Miss Joyce. Miss Marcia, Miss Ismay, Miss Joan, Miss Luigi, Miss Lisa, Miss Rita, Miss Louise, and Miss Fiona. Miss Caroline, Miss Gretel, Miss Kenya, Miss Regina, Reverend Fiona, Miss Sharon, Miss Elva, Miss Nadia, Miss Eleanor, Miss Lynette, and Miss Natalie. We remember and pray for Miss Delvarine, Miss Charlene, Miss Shelmadine, Reverend Linda, Miss Dominique. Miss Tanisha, Miss Brenda G, Miss Bernadine, Miss Sandra, Miss Catherine, and Miss Sheila. We pray for Miss Irene, Miss Pat, Miss Michelle, Miss Sophie, Miss Jean, Miss Angela, Miss Perla, Miss Anne, Miss Maisie, and Miss Tracy. We pray for Miss Patricia, Miss Laurel, Miss Megan, Miss Pessa, Miss Dillis, Miss Julianne, Miss Shanice, Miss Kimberly, Miss Susan, and Miss Dorothy B. In our prayers, we continue to pray for the following of our brothers. We pray for Mr. Zane, Mr. Larry, Mr. Kenrick, Mr. Wilfred, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Philip, Father Eric, Mr. Jeffrey, Mr. Tony, Mr. Gary, Mr. Belham, Mr. Ian, Mr. Edmundo, Mr. Charles, Mr. Dion, Mr. Freddy, Mr. Oscar, Mr. Costa, Mr. Finley, Mr. Dudley, and Mr. Francois. We pray for Mr. Leroy Jr. Mr. Rupert, Mr. Enrique, Mr. Robert, Mr. Rodney, Mr. Ismael, Mr. King, Mr. Walter, Mr. Edgar Jr., and Mr. Carlos. We pray for Mr. Sean, Mr. Lewis, Mr. Clinton, Mr. Emmett, 
Mr. Mark, Mr. Lindon, Mr. Gilbert, Mr. Alfred, Mr. Dion, Mr. Pablo, Father Constantia, Mr. Russell, Mr. Kurt, Mr. Donald, Sir Colvin, Mr. Michael Samuels, Mr. Michael Soberanis, Mr. Brindell, Mr. Ambrose, and Mr. Peter H. We remember and pray for Mr. Gustavo, Mr. Lincoln, Mr. Grayson, Bishop Curry, Mr. JMR, Mr. Dave, Mr. Trevor, Mr. Chris, Mr. Ernest, Mr. Father Mark, Mr. David, Mr. Carmen, Mr. Peter, Mr. Albert, Mr. Warren, Mr. Omar, Mr. Jervis, Mr. Irvin, Mr. Richard, Mr. Lloyd, Mr. Kieran, Mr. Kevin, Mr. Amiri, Mr. Ted, Mr. Paul, Mr. Clayton, and Bishop Wright. In our prayers, as we pray for those who are infirm, we remember and pray for those who are our at-home caregivers, even as we pray for those who are professionals in the health field, both in public and private institutions. We pray for the protection and enablement of all our medical professionals in the performance of their duties, remembering and praying especially for Drs. Rosado, Ed Manzanino, Arnold, Joseph, Flores, Cuellar, Arana, Mungia, Ken, Young, Sosa, Shogreen, Molina, Hidalgo, Ariaga, and Lawrence. We pray for our nurses, praying for Nurse McKin, Nurse Joyce, Nurse Olivia, Nurse Ashley, Nurse Alberta, Nurse Herrera, Nurse Gil, Nurse Lino, Nurse Julie, Nurse Kaduga, Nurse Ira, Nurse Orel, Nurse Shelby, Nurse Alejandra, and Nurse Alexi. In our prayers, as we pray for those who are infirmed and those who care for them, we remember and pray for those who cannot pray for themselves, and we pray together, Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve your sick servants, and give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs. That those for whom our prayers are offered may be strengthened in their weakness, have confidence in your loving care and experience your healing grace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In our prayers, we continue to pray for comfort for those who are mourning the loss of a loved one. We remember and pray for the family of Mr. Anthony Pants, the family of Dr. Fernando Friar, the family of Mr. Elise Ramos, the family of Ms. Lorraine Grosta, the family of Peter Martin Smith Jr., the family of Mr. Darren Taylor, the family of Mr. Darren Lopez, the family of Honorable Michael Scott, the family of Ms. Marge Middleton, the family of Mr. Jerome Neal, the family of Mr. Vernon Dubio, the family of Mr. Neil Martinez, the family of Mr. Gaspar Martinez, the family of Ms. Natalie Leslie, the family of Mr. Kent Burgess, the family of Ms. Dorothy Dudram, and the family of Mr. Kelly Wilson. For all those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, we pray that Almighty God will grant you comfort and peace during this time of treatment, and we pray for eternal rest for all those who have. In our prayers, we continue to pray for protection over our loved ones who are far away from us. We remember and pray for our students, praying for Austin, Freedom, Paige, Angel, Garrett, Rihanna, Jamal, Tiffany, Arian, Kai, Ria, Ashley, Randolph, Elisa, Amy, Karina, Courtney, and Akua. We pray for our loved ones in the military, praying for Jason, Emilio, Charles S., Derek, Charles C., Prince, Candy, Sam, Gavin, Christopher, and Misha. In our prayers, we continue to pray for those who are considered most vulnerable in our society. We pray for the poor, the needy, the elderly, persons with pre-existing health conditions, those battling ailments such as HIV, AIDS, cancer, lupus, MS, and all other autoimmune illnesses. We remember and pray for those who are living in circumstances of abuse of any kind, those who are battling with mental health challenges, those who are struggling with substance abuse and their relating complications. In our prayers, we pray for our security forces, for the government, for the churches, for the private sector, for all persons in positions of public trust and authority, for all non-governmental organizations involved in any form of humanitarian In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for the members of the international community, those severely affected by the ravages of natural disaster, and those that are afflicted by wars and civil as we pray for the international community, we continue to pray for protection for our region against the ravages of natural disaster and for protection against civil unrest and wars and trouble. Yes. 
for the prayers of our hearts of our tongues can I confess we pray that Almighty God will be our hearts. We conclude our intercessions by praying together. Almighty and eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments, that under your protection now and ever we may be preserved in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. By means of announcement, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you so much for joining me for morning prayer this morning. It is indeed a blessing and a privilege to be able to greet each new day in your presence, as well as in the presence of Almighty God. I want to thank you so much for joining me, even as I remind you of what our broadcast schedule will be like for today. Following this broadcast, we have noonday prayers at midday, um, evening prayer at 5.30 and compline at 9 p.m. to close of the day. I do pray that you are able to join us for any or all of these services as you are available. And if you miss it at its scheduled broadcast time, do not fret thyself. You can always revisit the Facebook pages of the churches in the Anglican Diocese of Greece to catch a recap of our services. I want to thank you for your continued support of the work and the ministry of the Anglican Diocese of Greece. We're going to wrap things up this morning with our prayer of dedication, followed by the grace, this is our then and let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our hearts, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve our persons in the power of the Holy Spirit, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to close off this morning with this one entitled, Come Down, O Love the Vine. And this one is sung for us by some of the children of Christ the King Anglican Church. I do pray you enjoy their rendition of this one entitled, Come Down, O Love the Vine. I pray you have a blessed and beautiful day today. Please do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe. Until tomorrow morning, same place, same time. God bless. <laughs> Bye for now.
We believe in Jesus, no matter what people say to us. We believe that He's our Lord by His resurrection. We believe that heaven may start from this land if we're open hearts to His resurrection and merciful love. Jesus has risen. If you believe Jesus is the way to seek, leave behind a life of sin. Come on forward, come follow him. Put your hands up. If you believe Jesus is the way to seek, leave behind a life of sin. Come on forward, come follow him. We believe in Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and endless life. Every day we say to him, here I am, you count on me. We believe that heaven may start from this land if we're open hearts to his resurrection.